What's up world and welcome to Nuxtux Creative Studios. Today's video is a time lapse of how I made this animation. Uh, unfortunately it's not from A to Z, but this will give you will show you a decent part of it. Now this is not the final product. I'm leaving that for the client. But this is close enough. Alright, so by, by this point it's 4 a.m when I uh, woke up from a nap with six hours left on the clock. I had already um, illustrated the character. Um, this is meant to be Conor McGregor, but I do not feel that I did an accurate representation of what he looks like. Um, although, to be quite honest, every time I look at his pictures, I, I don't always recognize him, depending. But that's besides the point. So here I'm separating the um, vector illustrations made inside of Inkscape, by the way. And so I can break them down into individual parts, uh, as you can see right there. So the reason why I'm not putting every single element on their own plane is because once I import this inside of Blender, I can go ahead and separate them in there and you'll see that in a moment. So at this point, uh, I'll just be doing this, uh, separating the planes or the assets, if you will, the body parts. Now this right there, I did, but I don't recommend doing it. And it was a just in case. Later on, I actually come back and change that and fix it properly. Um, these are, sort of quick fixes that sometimes I use for certain movements uh, especially when I'm on the clock and here seeing that I only had five hours left um, to turn this in this was a fiber gig um, so I went ahead and did that just in case but as I mentioned I do come back and fix it so I'll let this run for a bit and come back in a moment And down there is what I'm planning on using as the logo for Natutet, which by the way is a French, uh, French way of saying Nathan. Um, uh, it's a cousin of mine who used to call me that because my name is Jonathan and Natu was another nickname. Okay, so at this point I'm batch exporting the planes. So I simply grab the, uh, the planes, I remove the fill, and I batch export. Uh, now where it exports them to, I'm still not clear on how to set a default export for all of them other than setting it for each of the individual planes and then uh, doing the batch export. But either ways, I put everything there, I noticed there was a piece missing, so this is what I'm doing is getting that piece out. And I've imported everything inside of Blender using the uh, integrated add-on. It comes with Blender, which is the import images as planes. And now I'm using the knife tool inside of edit mode with the keyboard shortcut K. So I can cut the individual uh, parts on these planes. You'll notice that I separate them first because okay, there are lines that I did not cut into them. If you notice, every time I make a square. And that's Blender compensating for the lack of vertices. So I separate them into their own blocks so that when it does compensate with these lines, they don't interfere with uh, a different part of the body or a different shape on the plane. Then you can separate these pieces by pressing P on the keyboard while you're in edit mode and separate by loose parts. And as simple as that, then I simply rename them. So this is what I'm doing at this point, breaking down the body parts into their own parts. Remember what I said, the thing with the arm with the circle, it's a no-no, not to do. So, yeah.
uh, this part of the process took me, um, I believe it was an hour, yeah. From separating the planes and exporting them to bringing them inside a the blender and chopping them up. It took me about an hour, but that's when I had just woken up. So I think I was still a bit foggy because I felt myself working pretty slow despite the deadline being so close. Another body part that I didn't export somehow, or at least I didn't export it in the folder where I gathered all of the assets. Uh, somehow this character, uh, when I look at it, reminds me of PewDiePie. The YouTuber. Well, I mean, I'm saying it like. Okay, okay, maybe some people don't know PewDiePie, but um, seems like by this point, especially if you're on YouTube looking at this, you most likely know PewDiePie. Um, so you'll know this for most of this. My face is covered with the little logo I mentioned I'm going to use. Well, not here. But that's just, uh, all the lighting wasn't great. And I don't, I'm not talking. I'm just looking around being weird, like, like I just woke up face. So what just happened here is I have assets of smoke and I imported them inside of Blender. Um, hooked it up to a RGB mix node, switched it to screen. And now I just have it there as smoke. Uh, change the what's the name of that the color uh, profile if I'm not mistaken from RGB to filmic and I tried the different ones I think raw is the one I might have gone with in the end I don't recall it but no, I'm looking at it right now but so yeah it it gave it gave a more intense smoke. Um, most of these are planes, flat planes that I just bring in, extrude, um, reshape so that they have a bit more perspective to to their uh, shape, look and feel, and a lot of clicking around. Um, oh, and also this is this was accomplished with. Um, camera, uh, camera mapping, projection. In the purple right there, you want to offset it by one frame and then reduce it by one frame, the length, uh, for, for any of you that might run into such issue. But at least I found that's what worked for, for me. This is me going through the settings trying to figure out why is it doing that. Because um, I didn't want to do the offset thing. Because uh, I think the smoke shows in the first frame. So, yeah, so I'm using two cameras one for the camera projection. And the other one for the actual animation. Uh, these assets, well, the, the texture, this building, in the sky, the style that they have, they were created by um, Hisena. You know I'll put some links to her content down in the, the description. She's a fine art artist, uh, very talented, and. Um, she does animation, illustrations, portraits, uh, sculpting, uh, clay animation. She pretty much does it all at this point. Uh, motion graphics, uh, layout. Uh, she's a good designer. Oh, check it out. Five hours left on the clock. So yes, I'll put all of her links down in the description. So for this next part, I decided to rig the characters. Because, I mean, I set up the scene already, I had the assets, the 
visual effects, if you will, in there, so to rig the characters. Now, for some of them, I did not fully know the range of motion that I was going to do it. I had a pretty good idea. I have a storyboard. I'll see if I can flash it on the screen at some point. Um, but I did not fully know what range of motion I would give to them. Because uh, I saw the, the gig seven hours late. Because I never got a notification from the Fiverr app. In that one day, that is a single day that I did not check my email right away. Like seven hours later. So I was already behind on schedule. I've added more time now to the gig. But originally it was like, I can do this in a period of two days. So I've added, I pushed it up to three days. It's not much, um, but it works. Now there, I am parenting the bones, the body parts, to individual bones. Um, quick disclaimer, I'm not 100% yet um, acquainted with the new blender. I've used the 2.79, well the previous version since I started from way back with Blender. And uh, the new version is great, it's amazing, it offers so many new features and um, flexibility, and, but I'm still adapting to the shortcuts. Now right there I'm going to repair the bones, but this time using the, uh, was it relative? Parent the bone relative or keep offset. No, I think it's relative. That way I can edit the bones position, the well yeah, the bones position or rather the pivot points without the mesh moving with it. That way it makes it easier to find the right pivot point. I didn't take the time to create those in the illustration. Normally I make I calculate that within the illustration, so directly inside of Inkscape. And sometimes, or most of the times, I would export a pivot point map that overlays over this, and then I can just place the pivot points of the bones real quick, not have to do this manually. So this is what I'm doing at this point, is figuring it out. Now for the legs of this character, oh also, the weight paint for the um, continuous part, I also do that for the legs. For this one. No, actually this one has separate legs. It's the shirtless one that I did that for. Um, four hours left on the clock. Thinking to myself, wow, not much time. Drinking coffee, because why not? Um, so I think by that point it's like 5 a.m. You can actually notice in the background behind the blinds that it's, uh, it's bright now. And it was dark in the beginning, so that's the sun rising up on me. So yeah, uh, just setting it up, really. Moving some planes back. Does that need to be forward, forward? Uh, since I knew that I wasn't going to work in an orthographic view, and if this would be perspective, I tried to keep the planes as close to each other as possible so that there wouldn't be any odd offset when the camera moves. And okay, now for the torso, for example, I didn't do a uh, single parenting the bones. I went with a um, straightforward automatic weight. So then you go inside of the vertex group and you can eliminate the bones that should not have any influence at all. Because when you do with the automatic weight, it kind of includes all of the bones in the influence. So I just remove those real quick and I just work with what is supposed to influence it. And then I go ahead and adjust the weight for the bones that are influencing it. Uh, for example, this one, I didn't even separate the legs. So um, there was just a high probability of one leg influencing the other leg because they're on the same plane. So that's what I'm fixing real quick. And yeah, that's... Oh, I went to the clock again. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing for this whole part. Uh, now, I think anyone who follows my content or... Actually, I don't think I post 
these things as much. Uh, I also work in 3D and I do 2D animation, but they're not published as much. And I shied away from the 3D from um, struggling with res um, resources in terms of machine, the processing power. So at some point I was like, I'll just stick to the strict necessary when it comes to 3D, uh, especially for client work and so. But I do work with it. I create uh, 3D assets and, and such for certain things, certain projects. So yeah, still rigging the character. Actually, I think this is the last part. I don't have more of the process because it's only at this point that I thought to myself, hey, let's record what's going on here. Um, but for example, the ring, the ring that shows up, uh, I edited inside of GIMP. I think it's a watercolor effect or oil painting, not sure with some high pass filter and uh, well, some minor color grading or blur here and there. So yeah, see, adjusting the pivot points because I did not make a pivot map. And also, it's like this. This is meant to be quick, so I was already so close to being uh, late. Spoiler alert: I was late on delivery. Um, but client was satisfied, and uh, I switched the time. I changed the amount of time that it takes for me to deliver those. Although I'm thinking of changing the gigs parameters. Three hours left on the clock. So yeah, that is close to the final result. And, oh yeah. The final one has a funny touch to it. And a few corrections for some minor glitches. Well, that's it for today. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, hope you learned something if ever you want to see more of the process you can actually watch this at a lower speed basically so Again, thanks for watching. This is Jonathan from Nextex creative studios uh, If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up If you have any questions doubts or suggestions you feel free to leave them in the comment section down below Share this with your friends or anyone you know that might be interested or simply share it on your social media. That would be much appreciated as well. Uh, and I will see you next time. Thanks. Take care. Stay safe.